welcome him to be a part of that. Before we begin, I'd like to ask Rear Admiral John McNamara, United States Navy Chief of Chaplains, to say a prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, of old in scripture, you inspired the psalmist to sing these lyrics to the ideals of the American experiment. Amen. Thank you, Admiral. We please be seated. We're all gathered here to welcome into the office of Secretary of the Navy as my representative on Capitol Hill, an outstanding public servant who has won the respect of the leaders of both parties and to whom I've repeatedly turned for help and advice for the past two years, Will Ball. You know, sometimes you find that someone else has put things in a way you just can't improve upon. When Senator Talmadge introduced Will to the Senate Armed Services Committee, he said, one prerequisite for the Secretary of the Navy is character. Will Ball has character in abundance. And he added, the second prerequisite is patriotism, which Will Ball also has in abundance. Well, I second that all the way. Will takes over the Navy at a critical time. The defense budget has now been cut for four consecutive years, and yet we must maintain the gains this administration has made in rebuilding our naval and military capabilities. The good ship or the 600-ship Navy remains our goal. Will's job will be to skipper our naval forces through some troubled waters while keeping our Navy and Marine Corps teams second to none. Every good captain is concerned about the welfare of the men and women under his command. Will served three years aboard ship. He's had his sea legs for years, and he knows what matters to those who swab the decks, land on the shores, man the guns, fly the planes, live in the subs, and sail the oceans of the world in the cause of freedom. Keeping reenlistments high and the quality of our recruits the best it's ever been will be Will's other big assignment. That's never been easy, given the demands on our people who must deploy at sea for long periods of time and be separated from their families. This is but one of the challenges unique to the Navy facing our new secretary, and I'm confident he's the man for the job. It's no secret that Will has a big job ahead of him, but I have a feeling that Will is just the fellow to give up, a, or to give a few up on the hill, a dose of that old-time religion. After all, he's the son of a Baptist preacher, and I've seen he's a pretty good preacher himself when he gets going. That puts me in mind of a story that they used to tell about someone who once had his office just down the hall, back when this magnificent room belonged to the Secretary of the Navy. It concerns Teddy Roosevelt, who, as you know, served for a time as Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Well, you remember Teddy, strong-willed, persuasive, and nothing could stop him. There used to be a story about him that after he died, he got to heaven. And on his first day in heaven, he told St. Peter, your choir is weak, inexcusably weak. You should reorganize it at once. St. Peter said, all right, and gave T.R. the job. Well, Teddy said, I'll need 10,000 sopranos, 10,000 altos, and 10,000 tenors. But what about the basses, asked St. Peter. Teddy said, don't worry about that. I'll sing bass. <laughs> <laughs> One man bass section. Well, that's your job now, Will. Good luck. And God bless you. And I should add, now we'll have the swearing in. Mr. President, thank you very much, Will. If you and Mrs. Ball could... Uh... <laughs> Place your hand on the Bible. And... Raise your right hand and repeat after me. Uh, William L. Ball III do solemnly swear. I, William L. Ball III, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith, 
and allegiance to the same, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to work. So help me God, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. President. You honor me and my family by your presence here, and I shall be forever grateful for, to you for the privilege of serving on your staff and for this great opportunity you have given me. I also want to thank my new boss, Secretary Carlucci, for being here, my former boss, Secretary Schultz, for being here, and the other members of the Cabinet who could join us today. I especially appreciate the many members of Congress who have come down from the Hill on a very busy day to be with me in this historic room to share this special moment. I want to express special gratitude to Senator Howard Baker for his guidance and leadership and his patience with me as Chief of Staff. And of course, I, I will forever owe a debt of gratitude to John Tower for the opportunities and the lessons and the inspiration that he gave to me years ago. And it was just 23 years ago that I received a message from another gentleman in this room when I was a senior in high school and my mother called uh, from home and said I'd received a, tele a telegram. And uh, she, as an inquisitive mother, uh, would want to do, opened it. And it was a message from my senior senator saying that I had been uh, accepted in the Navy's ROTC program. And it was that message that began my uh, forthcoming association with the Navy. One week ago, that same senior senator called me and told me that the Senate had just confirmed me as Secretary of the Navy. And I don't know. Uh, of any duty that uh, a constituent could ask a senior senator to do uh, more than that which Strom Thurmond has done for me and for my family down through the years. Mr. President, on Monday I had occasion to visit the Carl C., the aircraft carrier, and she has just returned from a six-month deployment with the Sixth Fleet in the Mediterranean. On that great ship I was immediately able to see one of the many legacies that you will leave to history. This particular legacy is, is perhaps the one that matters most to those who serve at sea. It is indeed written on the faces of those Carl C. sailors in their spirit and dedication. It can be seen in the cleanliness of the fire rooms and engine rooms far below decks. It signifies what you have done, Mr. President, for our seagoing people who are proud once again, thanks to you. And I might add that as befits uh, a ship that so reflects the accomplishments of this president in office, the nickname given to the Carl C. is the Ageless Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready to assume my duties, Mr. President, and, and with the continued support and assistance of the Congress, we on your Navy and Marine Corps team will remain strong and prepared and will plan wisely for our future so that we can stay that way. As you have time and again explained to the American people, it is only by doing so that we can expect to preserve the peace and ultimately extend the special gift that is freedom to people the world over. Thank you. <laughs> 